was born in Saudi Arabia and, and finished his advanced secondary level as an honor student at the Riyadh based Manarat Ar Riyadh International School, which is the leading international school in the Middle East. He passed the UKICGSE Cambridge examination at the University of London in Excel advanced secondary examination with a standing result. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts and Master, Masters of Arts in Islamic Studies at Wisdom International School for Higher Education Studies, or which is the wishes. As Soma Cum Laude, he has taken Master of Business Administration units with excellent grade at Mindanao State University Online School in Mijumain Campus, Marawi City, with the excellent mark. He started as a teacher, then assistant principal, and now as a vice president for academic affairs of Wisdom International School for Higher Education Studies. He has traveled far and wide in various countries, including Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, Denmark, United Kingdom, Egypt, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, France, Germany, and United States. And now he is the managing director of Al Hikma Global, which is a global Dawah organization for foster Islamic understanding based in Davao City. Please help me welcome Ahmad Alim Ahmad. Dinda Mababaya. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdillahu fala mughinna lah wa man yughlil fala hadiya lah وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we thank Him, and we seek His aid and ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah misguides, there is none who can guide him. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone. Glory be to him having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him, his progeny, his companions, and all those who follow in their footsteps until the Day of Judgment. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the greatest greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good morning to everyone. Sawah wal khayr. We start off by mentioning the beginning ayah of Surah Al-Qamr in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran the glorious speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Iqtarabati al-Sa'at wa anshaqqa al-Qamar Iqtarabati al-Sa'at The hour, the day of judgment has drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder Yes, brothers and sisters in Islam the day of judgment is near. We never know when we will come to an end, when we will see our end. And we never know when the day of judgment will be called. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we must take note of these signs that are apparent and that are to come. The hour, the sa'a, the day of judgment has preludes to its beginning. It has its preludes, it has its signs. 
Some of the signs are more what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. إِنَّ مِنْ أَشْرَاطِ السَّاعَةِ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ الْعِلْمِ وَيُثْبَتَ الْجَهْلِ وَيُشْرَبَ الْخَمْرِ وَيَظْهَرَ الزِّنَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith that verily from the signs of the day of judgment is that knowledge will be lifted it will disappear al-jahl the opposite of it ignorance will prevail will spread khamr intoxicants alcohol will be drunk and zina fornication will spread brothers and sisters in islam this hadith states four signs of the day of judgment four signs which are deemed as some of the signs of the hour that are most important and apparent clear obvious plain to the eyes these signs are the prelude to the ruin of the world when the day of judgment will come and everything will come to its end. Everything shall disappear. The hour shall not emerge except after the earth is overwhelmed with evil, with evil and disbelief widespread. There shall be no good left on it, on this earth. Ignorance, misery, evil and infidelity will again prevail. People will no longer believe in the messages sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So complete aberration shall rule over them. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تقوم الساعة وعلى ظهر الأرض من يقول الله الله the hour shall not emerge while there is still on this earth one who says, Allah, Allah. Imagine the state of mishap and misery and distress that earth will be when the hour is so near. Brothers and sisters in Islam, these four signs of the Day of Judgment knowledge disappearing, ignorance prevailing, khamr and zina so widespread, constitute the most obvious signs in, of the minor signs. Because we all know that there are those major and minor signs of the Day of Judgment. But these are the most obvious. We see it everywhere. The first and the second signs are stated in the part saying, knowledge will be lifted and ignorance will settle. So what does that mean, brothers and sisters in Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not simply lift knowledge by taking it away from the hearts of the scholars, from the hearts of the ulama. No. Rather, He takes it away from them. He takes it away from us by the deaths of such scholars. Rahimahumullah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yantazi'u al-ilma min suduri al-ulamai intiza'a walakin yantazi'uhu bi qabdi al-ulamai bi'almihim fayabqa unasun juhalun yustaftawuna fayaftun fayadilluna wa yudillun Allahumma Allah does not take away the knowledge, the ilm, by taking it away from the hearts of the ulama. Rather, He takes it away by their deaths, by the deaths of the scholars. Until when none of them remain, when none of the scholars exist, people will rely on the juhad, on the ignorant leaders, those lacking knowledge. 
who when consulted will give verdicts without knowledge. When asked for a fatawa, they spread it out like that, with a snap. You need a verdict, I will give it to you. You want this to be halal, it will be halal. So they will go astray. They will go astray and they will lead others to go astray. Brothers and sisters in Islam, our ulama, the scholars, are the light of this life. They are the torches, the torches of righteousness and the lanterns of guidance. Thus when they die and they leave no one to take their place and fill the void, the emptiness that they have left behind, the light will also diminish and the life will turn dark. Ignorance will prevail and people will go astray in the midst of darkness. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ مِثْلَ الْعُلَمَاءِ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَثَلِ النُّجُومِ فِي السَّمَاءِ يُهْدَدَى بِهَا فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ فَإِذَا انْطَمَسَتِ النُّجُومِ the example of the scholars, the example of the ulama is like the stars in the sky. The stars in the sky. By which people are shown their way in the darkness of land and sea. Yet when these stars fade away, when they disappear, the people will also go astray. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, اِتَّبِعُوا الْعُلَمَاءِ فَإِنَّهُمْ سُرْجُ الدُّنْيَا وَمَصَابِيحُ الْآخِرَةِ Follow the scholars. Follow the scholars for verily they are the light of this life and the lanterns of the hereafter. Allah. Yet we watch, we see it with ourselves, we hear it with our ears, we read it with our eyes. We watch eminent and noble scholars pass away. Their time has come. Yet there's no one to succeed them. No real qualified dua to succeed them in their knowledge and favors. Their lights die down with them yet no one can follow them no one can compare to them if this is to continue if this will keep coming we shall not wait long before we go out seeking for a alim a real alim a real scholar or even a seeker of knowledge or a student of knowledge a talib al ilm but to no avail. I am not a alim. I'm not a scholar. To ever reach such level of dignity, of high esteem, one must really take and sacrifice his life for the ilm, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the ulama are being praised and commended, introduced before their lecture, we find and as witness and recorded that they will insist that their MC would stop out of humbleness, out of humility, feeling that they do not deserve such praise. Allah. These are the real scholars. Who are we to claim such titles for ourselves? I'm not saying that we cannot call one such and such or judge such and such by what we see or find. But the problem is when we find others who call themselves I am Shaykh al-Islam or I am Alim so and so 
or if you call me up, make sure you write my, my name, Alim. That is when we have a serious problem. Those who claim such titles, yet they do not deserve it. We see the people of knowledge disappear, passing away one after the other, leaving us with a tremendous void, emptiness, yet no one can truly fill it. Their successors, the tulab al ilm are far less in knowledge than they, though no one can really take their place. The tulab al ilm are here, the ulama are there. And then who are the, those who come after? It is true that we begin to suffer from the lack of scholars. Why? Because we Muslims, we Muslims have turned away from the religion, from the deen. And the Muslim educated youth have abstained from learning the knowledge of the deen. Knowledge of what? Of the Quran and the Sunnah. Knowledge of the deen. We have turned our backs to it. Always thinking, fearing that we will be perceived by others as backward people, people of inferiority, fearing that we will be called Muslims, fearing our identity, fearing who we have become. Thus the Muslim countries are badly lacking the knowledge, the Islamic schools, the madaris, that teach the knowledge of the Sharia, that, that teach the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are the consequences of these dangerous developments? What are the effects? Ignorance, ignorance, and ignorance. Darkness covering yet another darkness. Blackness getting even more black. Ignorance will settle and prevail. And the ignorant people will be the Imams and the leaders. Allahumma. The Juhal will become our leaders, which must definitely lead to apparent aberration. What is really heartbreaking, brothers and sisters in Islam? is that the general population of Muslims has become so ignorant in their religion that they fail to distinguish between al-khayri wa shaw the good and the bad from righteousness and evil from what is halal and what is haram this of course has led them to indulge in sinning in ma'asiyah the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ Seeking of knowledge is what? Mustahab? It is makruh? It is mubah? It is haram? It is bid'ah? It is? Wajib, tariqah, faru. It is obligatory for every Muslim. Seeking knowledge is obligatory for every Muslim. Specifically, what kind of knowledge? Knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what have we Muslims, with our names Muhammad or Ahmed, done regarding this obligation? This is a reminder to not only yourselves, but myself. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the proper understanding of Islam is indeed one of the good characteristics with which a Muslim may be honored. As the Prophet وسلم, said, May you read Allah khayra yufaqihu fi deen. When Allah wishes good, Khair for a person, he makes him understand the religion. 
Don't we all want that Allah wish for us goodness? And what is the way to that goodness? Is that we understand the filter of the deen. We have filter of the deen. We have understanding of the religion. Reading the Quran, learning it, and teaching it are among the best deeds, are among the best of ibadat. As the Prophet said, لا حسد إلا فتنتين رجل أتاه الله القرآن فهو يقوم به آناء الليل والنهار ورجل أتاه الله مالا فهو ينفقه آناء الليل وآناء النهار There should be no hasad There should be no hasad, no envy No wantingness, desire of something that other possess Except between two people who are these two people? The first, a man to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given knowledge of the Qur'an. So he recites it night and day. And a man to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given wealth, has given him much rizq. So he spent it in good deeds night and day. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we be among those two. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Al-dunya mal'oona Mal'oonun ma fiha Illa Dhikrullahi wa ma wala Wa alimun Aw muta'allim Wa alimun aw muta'allim This world is cursed Mal'oona Allah, cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is everything in it the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except for dhikrullah remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he likes and what he likes from the righteous deeds etc from those things that are halal and mustahab and alimun aw muta'allim a scholar or a student we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we be among these. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the path to knowledge is indeed lengthy. And it is a lifetime project. It is a lifetime project. The seeker of knowledge will continue to seek it until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لَيْ يَشْبَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِ مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَسْبَعُهُ حَتَّى يَكُونَ مُنْتَهَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى يَكُونُ مُنْتَهَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ The believer will never have enough will never be satisfied will never be full لَيْ يَشْبَعَ Never have enough of what he is listening to. Never have enough of what he is learning from good things, seeking knowledge until he reaches Jannah. May Allah make us of the people of Jannah. Brothers and sisters in, in Islam, we must be reminded that indeed the best time to seek knowledge is when one is young, when one is alert and has full of energy. As Barakumullah, our dear students. It doesn't matter if a person misses out on knowledge when he is young or in childhood. Because when a student is young, he is able to make up for what he has missed if he works hard. However, it is never too late to learn knowledge of the Qur'an and knowledge of the Sunnah. It is never too late to learn Arabic, to learn the Hadith, to learn the Fiqh and the Seerah of the Prophet and the Prophets As some of the scholars would say, 
that they would recommend people to start studying the knowledge of hadith at the age of 20 and others will say even 30. And what is our average age here from our young attendees? We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's never too late for us and that we continue to seek knowledge until the day we meet our Rabb. Ibn Ali Shaybah narrated in his Musannaf that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said Tafattahu qabla an tusawwadu Tafattahu qabla an tusawwadu Learn before you reach a level of prominence. Abu Ubaid said in Gharib al-Hadith يَقُولْ تَعَلَّمُوا الْعِلْمِ مَا دُمْتُمْ صُغَارًا قَبْلَ أَنْ تَصِيرُوا سَادًا He says, acquire knowledge when you are still young. مَا دُمْتُمْ صُغَارًا Before you be وَسَلَّمَ فِي كِبَرِ سِنِّهِمْ And the companions, the Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, acquired knowledge even when they were older. Brothers and sisters in Islam, let us look back at some of our Salaf al-Salih and the righteous predecessors whom we follow and take their manhaj. Let us take a look at how these great scholars would manage their time in seeking knowledge and advice for me and for you. Ibn al-Attar, the student of al nawawi said, Our Shaykh, rahimahullah, told me that he never spent any time by night or by day without being busy with knowledge, without being busy with ilm. And even on the road, he would be reading. Imam al nawawi Even on the road, he would be reading. He continued like this for six years. Then he began to write books. He never ate during the day or the night except a meal after Isha prayer. He never ate, never drank day or night except after a meal after except for a meal after Isha and he drank only once Imam al nawawi just before dawn just before Fajr he said I am afraid that my body may become hydrated and make me want to sleep subhanallah and we hear some of our contemporary scholars Shaykh al-Albani would be so studious, so diligent in his quest for ilm that he would, he would always find him in the darkness of the library so much so that the librarian himself would give the key to the library and he would continue studying even when the candle will glow he and the likes of and, the, and his likes Ibn Uthaymeen, Ibn Baz rahimahullah Another example, Ibn Aqil al hambadi said, It is not permissible for me to waste an hour of my life even when my tongue is not busy with memorizing or debating with others or my eyes are not busy in reading. I would think, I would use my mind, I would let my brain work even when I am resting or relaxing. So I would not get up from this rest or this relaxation without an idea to write down. I limit the time I spend eating as much as I can to such an extent that I choose a few crumbs love, and follow it with water. A few crumbs and follow it with water. Rather than bread, not even bread, brothers and sisters in Islam, because, what does he say? Because bread takes more time to chew. So as to save my time for reading or writing down some useful ideas, Allah Akbar. So much jihad for Allah's sake. He continues on saying the best thing for the wise man to save is time. Time wasters are so much in this world. We can name a whole bunch of them. Facebook, TV, going out, 
Let me tell you, brothers and sisters in Islam, what is the use of updating yourself? Picture, picture back my time. Dinner, hashtag Starbucks. Selfie, back my time. Posing from this angle, from that angle, from this hand here, whatever. It, what are you doing? What has our Muslim brethren <coughs> succumbed themselves to? Their lusts, their desires. Like, 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 share, share, comment, cute. This is the time that we are spending. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, let us try to spend our time. Many of the scholars would say that Facebook is haram except when you intend to do some khayr on that page. If you want to share some good message, some good posts, then that is the time when it becomes halal. Many, uh, many things can be in their nature mubah, but they can fall into haram depending on how you use it. The internet, for example. You start off by searching on YouTube, you want to start off, mashallah, with good niyyah, you're searching for something on, let's say, uh, the animal kingdom in Islam perspective. You see some good videos, mashallah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then from there on the right, related videos, you see monkey doing this. And then you say, okay, let me just uh, check it out. And then from there, from monkey, then you see uh, some guy doing a monkey dance, for example. And then from there, you uh, waste your time again and again. And lo and behold, you have no time. You have no time. But when we compare ourselves with the ulama of the past, in how even to eat, they would rather have crumbs and, and water. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, in our search for knowledge, the seeker of knowledge should not ignore the current events and the state of his society so as to be able to relate the Islamic knowledge with his surroundings. These are also essential knowledge. That is not to say that when we only learn the Quran and the Sunnah, we forget English, we forget science, we forget business, etc. Whatever is useful for you, take it. And even those who have cho chosen the path of science or medicine, let there be even ample small time for the Quran and the Sunnah. The scholars have always said that a Muslim cannot be one, and this is a reminder for myself and for you, cannot be one who passes a day without reading one page of the Quran. One page of the Quran. Yesterday did we read that page of the Quran? Allahumma Musa'ah. The Faqih, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the one who understands the text properly and understands the reality to which he applies them. If your ambition is to reach the same level of knowledge as the great Imams, as the great Imams, for instance, of the Madahib, that is a blessing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed he stole on whomsoever he wills. And that is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is impossible. But you must prove what you say. And the way to prove it is by striving hard. Striving hard to acquire knowledge, this ilm. Whether, and it is best if you can actually learn personally from some of the existing ulama. If you have a chance to study in Medina, then do so. Study in Mecca, do so. Study wherever the great alim is living, then do so. For you will benefit greatly from him. You have to devote yourself and your wealth to that. That seeking Allah's help to enable you to reach the status of an imam in knowledge and religious commitment. For that is a quality, that is a quality which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commends 
his, uh, his slave. And because of the importance of knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seek more of it. Allah says, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِنِّي عَلْمًا And say, our Rabb, our cherisher, our sustainer, increase me in knowledge. He did not say, رَبِّ زِنِّي in terms of whatever will the worldly affairs or matters. Money. Assets here and there. This deen, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the deen of ilm. The very first ayah was Iqra' read. Iqra' ismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The very first command to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I leave you brothers and sisters in Islam with a famous quote which we pray to Allah that we will try to follow. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.